Almost all rice-obsessed cultures seem to have this one collective obsession. That is, that crispy rice that forms at the very bottom of some rice dishes. In Guangdong, it's fanjiu. In Spain, sokorat. In Iran, tadig. But under that backdrop, it's the hilly Xiangxi region of western Hunan that really kind of throws the gauntlet. Because if we all really love scorched rice all that much, what's stopping us from making a rice dish that's solely crispy rice, topping it with a whole bunch of flavorful toppings, and folding the thing into a sandwich? This is one of the best street food dishes I've ever had. So we've wanted to share it for a while, but it did kind of prove a tougher nut to crack on the research front. You see, this is a very specific dish from the Shangxi Autonomous Prefecture in Hunan, and it's a street food dish, so there's not a ton of resources out there in Chinese or otherwise. So, what we'll be doing today is something a little different, because we'll be 100% mirroring this exact vendor in Huaihua. We wanted to not just show you him making it too, like we sometimes do, but also break down a little bit of what our thought process is when we're trying to mimic this sort of dish to distill into a recipe for you. Now, the first thing that you can probably notice is that he is using some special equipment, a long carbon steel pan that seems custom made for this exact job. We don't have one, you don't have one. But as soon as I saw that shape, I immediately thought of a Japanese tamagoyaki pan. Tamagoyaki pans are a little wider, so the final shape will be ever so slightly different, but good enough for government work. Also, he's got those loose lids, which some tamagoyaki pans include, but ours doesn't, so we'll just MacGyver one with aluminum foil. That said, I am also aware that not everyone has a tamagoyaki pan just lying around, so we'll also give this a whirl in a large cast iron skillet to make a potentially family-sized variant too. More on that near the end of the video. Next, a little off camera, sorry about that. You can see him liberally oiling those pans and we wanted to make sure what that oil was. Now, longtime viewers of this channel know about Saizio. It's a sort of virgin rapeseed oil that's widely used throughout Sichuan, Hunan, and Southwest China. In the West, it's available at some, but not all, Chinese grocers. If you can find it, use it. If you can't, a nice substitute would be Indian mustard seed oil. And if you can't find either, just use something a bit more fragrant like peanut. Next, we can see him ladling in some soaked sticky rice into the pan, so we pressed for some more details. This is like just soaked, right? Yeah. It may start soaking with hot water. Hey, how cute you This is using rice or rice? Rice. Ah, rice. So it's hot. It's hot. Right, so the type of sticky rice that's used in Southwest China, for this sort of savory thing at least, is a long grain sticky rice. The same sort of sticky rice that's the go-to in Southeast Asia. So we'll just thoroughly rinse 65 grams of our long grain sticky rice a few times till the water's lost about half of its original opacity. And then, just like he said, soak with cool water for 7 to 8 hours and you could also go overnight. Oh, so then, he says 10, maybe 15 minutes before topping, so we'll use that as a base, but definitely notice his stove. It's one of those electric grills that are designed for even heating. Something charcoal might also work, but over a gas or an electric stove at home, we'll have to compensate by going at a lower flame and moving our pan around when cooking. It'll work fine, but it'll probably up the cooking time. So, at topping time, the first one is easy enough. 
It's a chili furu, fermented bean curd, and stuff like that can be found at Chinese supermarkets worldwide. If you can find the Laogama brand of chili oil furu, this one would be pretty perfect. But in a pinch, even a Cantonese plain white furu would also totally do the job here. Second component, chili fried dogan. Now, dogan is a sort of hyper-firm tofu that you may or may not be able to find at Asian supermarkets near you. It might be called five-spice tofu, and if you can find a smoked tofu, that'd also be tasty. But in a pinch, feel free to use a super-firm tofu, or even a bit of diced lean pork. To fry it, as always, first, long yao. Get your wok piping hot, shut off the heat, add in your oil, here are about two tablespoons, and give it a swirl to get a nice nonstick surface. Heat on low now. Go in with two cloves of minced garlic and a half an inch of minced ginger, and fry those till fragrant about 30 seconds. Then, we'll need to add in some dojiao, fermented chopped chilies. If you can find a bottle of a brand called Tantan Xiang at your grocer, that'd be pretty perfect. But we just use some of Laogama's so-called pickled chili, which is basically the same thing. So one tablespoon of that, fry it all for about a minute, then up the flame too high and toss in 150 grams of diced dogan. Give that a good 30 second fry, then swirl in a tablespoon of liaojiu, aka Shaoxing wine, another 30 second fry, another tablespoon of soy sauce, also over the spatula and around the sides of the wok. Another good mix, then season with a quarter teaspoon salt and an eighth teaspoon each MSG and white pepper. Quick mix and out. <laughs> So then, the next three things he tosses in here is some la jiao chao la jiao, Hunanese chili fried chili, followed by some stir fried seaweed, and finally some jerma laza or sesame fried chili flakes. The chili fried chili one is pretty easy. It's a common enough topping at noodle shops and the like in Hunan. One tablespoon of oil, clove of minced garlic, together with a touch of minced ginger, Fry till fragrant, then toss in 150 grams of a not too spicy chili pepper. We used a mix of red and green for the sake of good looking, but something like serranos or even jalapenos would fit the bill just fine. Fry over a medium flame for about 30 seconds, then up the flame too high and swirl in a half tablespoon of Xiaoxing. Another 30 seconds, same move with a half tablespoon soy sauce, another quick fry, then in with the seasoning, which I'll just list at the top of the screen. Quick mix and out. Component number two, stir-fried seaweed, another Hunan classic. We'll be using 15 grams of dried kelp here, soaked in cool water for 30 minutes, then given a good wash to get on any stray sand. Then to cut, just roll that all up and slice into half centimeter slivers, and give it a couple chops in the other direction to get something that looks something like this. Then, to fry, throw in about a half tablespoon oil and go in at first with two cloves of minced garlic a touch of minced ginger, and one fresh hot chili cut into slices. Over a low flame, fry those till fragrant, about 30 seconds, then toss in your kelp and up the flame to high. One minute fry, swirl in a teaspoon of soy sauce, and after another quick mix, shut off the heat and toss in the seasoning. Another mix, half teaspoon toasted sesame oil to finish, and out. Then last, sesame fried chili flakes. Two tablespoons of oil, and for this we'll be using one tablespoon of sesame seeds together with three tablespoons of a spicier chili flake. Fry those together over a medium low flame for about five to six minutes, or until the chili flakes have deepened in color and have gassed the air enough to start an inevitable cascade of sneeze. <laughs> then just toss in your seasoning, swirl in a half teaspoon soy sauce, and the sesame fried chili flakes are also done. Next, okay, is something called yuxing cao, or fish wort. It's the root of the Hutinia cordata plant. It's hyper-aromatic. They use the leaf as an herb in Vietnam where it's called zip ca, but pretty much nowhere outside of southwest China grows it just for the root. It's hard enough for us to find here in Bangkok, so don't beat your head against the wall trying to find it. 
Cilantro also hits the same note here, and honestly, in our test, we kind of preferred it for this specific dish. And of course, he finishes up with Xiangla Tudo Si, a Chinese classic. Now, for this one, we're going to be a little lazy and more or less just following the esteemed Wang Gang's recipe, because that's where I learned the dish. So definitely do check out his video after this one, because he's also got some good knife skill tips in there as well. Either way, 400 grams of peeled potato, first cut into thin 3 millimeter wide sheets, then laid out and sliced into 3 millimeter wide slivers. Then just transfer those over to a wide basin, give the slivers a real thorough wash to get off that surface starch, and transfer to a strainer. Then, to some bubbling water, blanch the potatoes for one minute, then remove and rinse with cool water to stop the cooking process. Then, to fry, long yo with about two tablespoons of oil, and over a low flame, toss in two cloves of minced garlic together with about three dried chilies sliced into sections. 30 second fry till fragrant, then toss in your potato and up the flame to high. Stir fry for about a half a minute, swirl in a half tablespoon wine, another half minute, then a tablespoon of soy sauce. Another half minute fry, seasoning in, give it all a quick mix, and out. Final component, done, and now we can make our sandwich. So, okay, pieces in place. Let's start by liberally brushing our tamagoyaki pan with oil, which ended up being roughly a half tablespoon worth in all. Then we'll strain our sticky rice and lay that into a pan. Next. While the vendor obviously just eyeballed this, we found that spooning in about six tablespoons of water to cook felt about right, together with about an eighth teaspoon of salt to give things a sort of base flavor. Then just cover things up and let the rice cook over a medium low flame. You won't need to be overly attentive here, but try to move your pan around every couple minutes or so to help the thing cook even. Now, with all these sorts of rice dishes, everyone always tells you to never peek. And while I agree that you shouldn't be lifting things willy-nilly, I'm personally not a fan of that mantra. I believe that you should peak once, adjust once. So at the 10 minute mark, I took a look at what we were looking at, everything looked fine, so we can just charge forward with our mind at ease. And at the 15 minute mark, the rice should be about cooked, so then we can just uncover and start the crisping process over a medium flame. Now again, the vendor didn't have a separate uncovered frying step like I'm doing here. But on a home stove, I do think it's handy to have a visual on things to make sure everything's crisping evenly. It'll probably take about 10 minutes to get things to golden brown. And once you're there, just shut off the heat and start topping. One cube of fermented bean curd, spread on, a teaspoon of that sesame chili, two tablespoons of dogon, a tablespoon each chili fried chili and seaweed, a generous sprinkle of fish wort or, of course, cilantro, and a good heap of the potato stir fry. Fold it over, and now you've got yourself a sandwich. And while we were feeling pretty happy with how this all turned out, we did end up getting a sort of nagging feeling. That is, that one singular serving of sandwich, plus 25 minutes of active cooking, would probably equal almost none of you ever actually trying the dish. So let's see if we can't try to alleviate that final pain point with a 14 inch cast iron pan. So to fill this guy up to the same level, You'll need about 210 grams of that long grain sticky rice, soaked overnight just like before. Then thoroughly oil the pan, spread it over the rice, and toss in a cup and a quarter of water together with a half teaspoon of salt to cook. Then same deal, cover and cook over medium low. And at the 10 minute mark, this is why I like to peak once. Our rice ended up clumping to one side, probably because our patio here is at an ever so slight angle. Not ideal, but because we peaked, we can still correct things, spread things out to be a bit more even. Either way, for this size pan, in the end we found it took about double the time, so 30 minutes to cook the sticky rice and 20 minutes to crisp things up. Then to serve, just slice this in half, transfer the halves over to a chopping board, and cut them into eighths like a pizza. Top one slice with your smorgasbord of toppings, cover it up with another, and while a little sloppier, still a solid enough representation of the dish we think, and enough for four people to share. 
So I know the toppings may seem like a lot, but they are all pretty easy to make dishes and during testing, we can get them all done within an hour front to back. So if you just want to make some toppings, they are actually a pretty complete meal. You can just whip them up and eat it with white rice. They're all very good open rice dishes. On the other hand though, if you just want to make the crispy rice and want to save some time on your toppings, uh, the meat sauce that we did a couple weeks back was great on uh, the crispy rice. I've been doing it, add some aromatics to it. They're awesome. So right, uh, check out the recipe in the description box. A big thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos.